All right, so this is a book talk for pages 39 through 44. So we're starting here at chapter 3. We're on the ranch. Um, we just kind of met everybody who, who lives on the ranch. And um, it's getting to be evening time. And George and Slim are sitting in the bunkhouse together. Now here's some of that imagery that we've been talking about. We have um, Slim reached up over the card table and turned on the tin shade electric light. Instantly, the table was brilliant with light, and the cone of the shade drew its brightness straight downward, leaving the corners of the bunkhouse still in dusk. Slim sat down on a box, and George took his place opposite. So it's sort of like the two of these guys are sitting at a table, and they have like a spotlight on them. Imagine that, sort of like a spotlight or these lights from heaven or something like that. Anytime George and Slim sit down together and um, have a deep conversation, we're going to see this idea of the light showing up. Um, remember that when Slim was described, he was described as someone who um, really listened to everyone on the, uh, on the ranch, who has a lot of understanding, who seems very wise. Um, people look up to him. Well, George is also kind of one of those wise characters. So we have the two of them together. We're going to have this conversation. So what they're talking about when we open up is that Slim has given uh, Lenny one of the dogs. George asked him if he could have one of the dogs, and he did. And so he's like, ah, it's no big deal. Uh, you know, she couldn't take care of them all anyways. And he's like, well, that was the biggest deal in the world to him. And then they start to, sort of talking a little bit about um, how Lenny works. So it was a good thing that they gave Lenny a chance because he said, there's no one that can keep up with him. God Almighty, I've never seen such a strong guy. So here again, another reference to how strong he is, right? Um, George is, is proud of him because they're friends and he kind of brought him there and he's like, tell Lenny what to do and, and, and he'll do it. You know, he can't do any figuring, but he'll just take those orders. And um, so these two guys are just inside having their deep conversation while everyone else is outside playing horseshoes. Um, and Slim brings up that topic that he still doesn't know anything about yet because they haven't had this conversation. Because it's funny how you and him string along together, right? It says, it was Slim's calm invitation to confidence, meaning, even though George gets a little bit defensive right away, he's like encouraging him to talk to him. He, he wants to know, but he's not doing anything wrong. He's not trying to be mean or anything by this. So um, he explains himself a little bit. He's like, you know, I've never seen two guys kind of walk around together. Usually when ranch, ranch peoples are solitary, they come, they do their work, they leave. And, and it's over. Uh, but it's funny, he says, a cuckoo like him and a smart little guy like you. And George says, well, he ain't no cuckoo. He's dumb as hell, but he ain't crazy. And I'm not so bright either. I wouldn't be bucking barley for 50 and pound. If I was bright, I'd be a little bit even a little bit smart. I'd have my own place, and I'd be bringing in my own crops instead of doing all the work and not getting what comes out of the ground. So it says, George fell silent. He wanted to talk. Slim neither encouraged nor discouraged him. He sat back quiet and receptive. So he's listening, right? He's not he's not um, judging him in any way. He's just listening to him talk. And he's just kind of getting a feel for George because George is just sort of letting it all out. He's like, listen, the guy's not crazy. We're friends. You know, he, he, can, he can work hard. You know, I'm not so bright either. And he gives the truth. Um, this is like the real story, the, the, the real story behind the two men, right? Him and me was both born in Auburn. I know his Aunt Clara. She took him when he was a baby and raised him up. When his Aunt Clara died, Lenny just come along with me working. Kind of got used to each other after a while. There's no big secret here. There's no big crazy story behind it all. There's no horse that kicked him in the head. They're not cousins. Just simply, they've known each other all their lives. Now... Our lives didn't always start off so great with the two of them being besties, right? So, as you can imagine, as younger kids, George picked on Lenny, right? But he didn't just pick on him. He kind of played mean-spirited jokes on him, and Lenny didn't get it. Lenny just wants to be accepted, right? All Lenny wants is to be accepted. And um, he felt like he was accepted when George would ask him to do things. And so he would do anything George said. But 
George says, I used to play jokes on him because he was too dumb to take care of himself. He was too dumb to even know that he had a joke played on him. At first, he had fun. And he says, Lenny never got mad about it. So it's like he either didn't figure it out or he just simply didn't care. It's one or the other. We don't really know. And then one day, this is the, this is the turning point in uh, George's, George's life and his picking on Lenny. He says, one day, I told him to jump in the lake. Said, just said jump in because he'd do anything George said, right? So Lenny jumps in, but Lenny can't swim. So they, George and his friends had to spend a whole bunch of time trying to save Lenny and barely gets him out. And when he gets out, Lenny's not mad. Lenny's like, oh, thank you so much for helping me. Oh, he was so nice about it. Totally forgot that George told him to jump in in the first place. So it was at that point that George realized I probably shouldn't play these jokes on him. He's never done anything like that again. So, and then they talk about guys who are nice and guys who are not nice and ranch people a little bit. And he says, you know, Lenny doesn't seem to have a mean bone in his body. But these ranch people, after a while, they get mean. They're all by themselves. All they can think of is themselves and, and, and getting what they need. So they get mean. They start to fight all the time. They don't want to talk to anybody. And he's like, yeah. You know, it is nice to walk around with someone. Lenny, he can be sort of a pain in the butt. Um, but you get used to going around with a guy and you can't get rid of him. So he enjoys going around with Lenny. And Slim recognizes that Lenny is not mean at all, that he's just super strong. So then George is really comfortable now, right? And he starts to spill the beans just a little bit more. And he's like, yeah, well, he gets in trouble all the time because he's sort of stupid. So, like, what happened in Weed? So, he gives the whole story here. Um, why do you think he feels so comfortable confessing to Slim? Slim just makes everybody feel that way, right? You have confidence that he's not going to tell anyone, that he's just going to sit and listen, that he's not going to judge. So far, he he's, seems like very reasonable and very fair um, and a good friend. So, it's nice that George has somebody that he can talk to here. So they go through the story, or George goes through the story again, and it's the same story that we kind of heard before. We just got a couple more details. He reaches out to feel, Lenny reaches out to feel the girl's red dress, and the girl screams. Lenny gets all mixed up and keeps hanging on to the dress, and uh, because Lenny's scared and he doesn't know what else to do, George comes running over when he hears all the noise and whacks him in the head with a fence post to get him to let go, and they have to run off and they have to hide. Um, the rest of the night because the girl then goes and tells everybody that she was raped. I don't know why she did that. Some people just like to start a little bit of drama maybe, but she was not raped. Um, all he did was grab her dress, which of course is inappropriate, but he doesn't know that. And um, when she says that she's been raped, of course, everybody in Weed, the other town, starts hunting him down because they want to kill him. And um, so they're under the grass and sticks and in the water all night long waiting for these people to go away and that's how they get away and um george confirms that you know lenny never hurt this girl nothing ever happened and um then lenny enters the room so lenny enters the room and he's all hunched over and he's like this and he, and he walks over to his bed he's like yep pup's great and he lays down just like with that mouse earlier george knows right away what's going on here right he knows that Lenny brought that puppy in. He can't bring the puppy away from his mother right now. It's way too young. He's like, give me that pup. No, I ain't got no pup. I ain't got no pup. You know, so he's he still plays the game just like he did with that mouse earlier. Just like a little kid, right? Again, kind of indirectly characterizing him. Um, but George gets the puppy, makes Lenny take it back. And um, Slim recognizes just how childlike he is. He says, he is just like a kid, isn't he? And he's like, yep, there ain't no more harm in him than a kid, neither, except he's so strong. So again, we've got the childlike mind, but we've got like the super body strength going at the same time. Um, so Lenny goes back outside with the, with the uh, puppy, and that's the end of this scene.